Hello everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Marius Ho and today I want to go over five advanced gimbal transitions that you can try. And for today's video, I'll be using the June Weeble 2 right here. Let's go. So welcome to another video. It's great to see you back here again on the channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for weekly content similar to today's video. And if you already subscribed and you came back, thank you again so much for being here again. So in today's video, I wanted to go over these five gimbal transitions that anyone can do. Some of them are a little easier to do than others, but with tons of practice, any of these transitions can become simple to you, even if you're a beginner. For all of these transitions, I use the Sony a7 III, with the Tamron 17 to 28 lens. I shot all of this footage also at 60 frames per second. And that's going to be important because once you slow that down in post, you're going to be getting slow motion footage. And when you have slow motion, it's a little easier in my opinion to do speed ramps. And speed ramps are going to be key in order for these transitions to match seamlessly. It's not a must, but I just find it's a little easier to do if you're shooting in slow motion. For the gimbal, I'm using the GN2 by Weeble. No. For this video, I'm using the June Weeble 2. And if you're interested in getting a gimbal for yourself, I have a discount code below that will give you 20% off the June store. You can check it out in the description if you're interested. So you saw some of these transitions at the beginning of this video already, but now I'm going to go step by step onto how I was able to create some of these transitions and how you can also create them for yourself. For each of these transitions, you're going to be using a slightly different mode on your gimbal. If you have a newer gimbal, your gimbal should have one of these modes. It could just be in a different name if your gimbal is from a different manufacturer. For this first transition, I like to call it the semi-orbit transition with the subject standing right in front of a wall. For this transition to work, you also need to set your gimbal to pan follow mode, which means that the tilt function on your gimbal is locked, but your gimbal will follow the pan movement of your wrist. One key for this to work is to try to keep as much as possible the subject centered in your frame at all times. And this is why you need to pan as you rotate around the subject. It's not an easy gimbal move to do if you want your transition to look seamless from the first shot to the second shot, but with everything, tons of practice will do the trick. For the first shot, you want to place the subject in the middle of the frame and you do a semicircle orbit around your subject. You do the exact same movement in the second shot and the third shot if you're doing multiple scenes of this transition. In order to make this transition even better, what you'll need to do is adjust some of the speed ramps later in post. This second transition I like to call the POV orbit. And like the name says, you're going to have your gimbal set in POV mode. And that just means that your gimbal is going to move whichever way you move it with your hand, giving you that point of view sort of look. So for this first shot, I wanted to do an orbit around the subject's hand. And as the camera was going through that motion, the transition would reveal the same hand, but this time with the watch on. This transition was a little tricky to pull off. It took me quite a lot of tries to get it right. Make sure that both shots follow the same movement in this instance when I, ha I had the camera just orbit around the wrist this way for both shots. I later combined these two clips and did a little bit of speed ramping at the tail end of the first clip and the beginning of the second clip. The next transition is the vortex transition. For this transition, you're going to have your gimbal set to vortex mode. For this transition, not only are you tracking forward, but you're also slowly rolling the camera. And that you can either do with the handle on your gimbal or with a joystick on your gimbal. This is a little bit advanced too, so as long as you try it a few times to make sure that your subject is always centered, you're going to be able to get a smooth and seamless transition. This next transition is called the POV roll. And these are names that I'm just making up, so you can call them whatever you like. For this transition, your camera is going to be again in POV mode. And what you want to do is, as you're tracking your subject going from one direction to the other, you're going to roll your camera and do like a falling motion. And that's where you'll need that POV mode on your gimbal. On the second shot, you can start from a blocked frame with something in front of your lens. In this case, it was a stone step that was pretty high enough for me to roll out from. 
So because in the first shot, I went from here to here, on the second shot, when you follow that same motion, if you were to do the entire rotation this way, your camera will come from this way up here. And another thing that would help to make this even more seamless is that whatever frame that you end up in on the first shot, it should have a similar texture or color as the same on the second shot. The next transition is the push back and tilt. In this transition, you're going to have to set your gimbal in follow mode so your gimbal follows the pan and the tilt movements of your hand. So as I'm tracking back from the subject, I slowly tilt the gimbal down to reveal the ground as I'm continuing to track back. On the second shot, you can tilt down from an object, from the sky or from a building and reveal the second shot. And when you blend both of these shots together, it looks like you're rolling from the first shot into the next one. And this next one is just a bonus transition that I wanted to show you. It's super simple to do. This is just a simple track in transition where you have two shots that are composed in a similar way and you're just tracking forward on both shots. And what you'll do is just speed ram the tail end of the first shot and speed ram the beginning of the second shot. And for this transition, you want to have your gimbal in lock mode. So that way your gimbal is going to be facing that same direction the entire time. And you don't have to worry about tilting or panning your gimbal by mistake. These are all the advanced transitions that I wanted to show you. They're really cool to try out and I encourage you to incorporate some of these in your next video. So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you learned something new. If you did, please consider subscribing, hit the like button, the notification bell, and all of that fun YouTube stuff. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite transition. And if you're still here, here are a couple of videos you could watch next and I'll see you next time.